welcome to First Look, a gear show we've made up from scratch, where I'm not allowed to actually look at the things that have been sent to us by companies and been sent to the office until I'm actually doing it in front of camera, because reasons. Why are we doing this on the snowiest day of the month so far? Because it looks good on camera. <sighs> Cold. Wearing 14 jackets. We were sent some equipment from a company called Outdoor Edge. It was a company I'd heard of but never actually had any experience of them. I'd heard them mentioned in things like American bow hunting podcasts and hunting podcasts and YouTube. I saw some of their stuff on YouTube but I never had the opportunity to experience them in the flesh or see what they're like. And I know we'd had a delivery from Outdoor Edge and had been sent to the office because I was allowed to play with the brush demon machete knife thing, which is going to be in a future review. But I wasn't allowed to play with the other two boxes or know what was in them. So because I was told, we're going to do this on a video, we're going to do it on a review video. So yeah, we've, we've got some things, but I don't know what I'm going to unbox here. So I've just been told it's a box and it's got something to do with knives. So disembodied hand, can I have my first item, please? Excellent GoPro work there. This is the Outdoor Edge Wildlight six-piece game processing set. And this, you can see where there was tape on this and someone's opened it. So someone has opened this in the office already and had to play with it, but not me. So this is the first look. So packaging, there's a hard plastic case. Oh, well, oh yeah, there's a list here. A 2.5 inch caper. So presumably that's the thing for caping and skinning, not for, not the thing you have on pizzas. A 3.75 gut hook, 75 inch gut hook skinner. These are all in um, freedom units, aren't they? Not a good old fashioned metric. Five inch boning fillet knife, two stage sharpener and gloves. So presumably given the COVID period we're in, the gloves are the most valuable thing in here to some people. Uh, this is the hunting and processing range. Outdoor edge, make the cut. Ooh, the stuff on the back. We scouted hard, we endured the cold, and it all came together with a successful hunt. Let somebody else do the rest? Never. And neither should you. The wild light, spelt L-I-T-E, lets you control how your game is broken down and gets the job done fast. Ensure the quality of the meat for your family and save the cost of commercial processing. Make the cut. All the tools to process game like a pro. Precisely heat treated 420J2 stainless steel blades ensure excellent edge retention on a hand finished shaving sharp. Perfectly balanced full tang blades, rubberized blaze orange handles with an elk horn texture. What does elk horn texture mean? Uh, are easy to spot and provide a secure non-slip grip. Hard-sided carry case keeps each tool clean, dry, and organized. And then some specifications and some sketch things there. You know, GoPro, show that. That's what's there. So if you keep that one there, I'll take it out of the case. I'm gonna put that under the table so it stays vaguely dry. So case thing. It's like one of those blow molded plastic cases you, you get with tools and things that you never put the tool back into after you've bought it. You end up with a huge stack of them in the corner of the workshop. Um, yeah. Instructions, using the sharpener. Rust is not covered by warranty. Knives should be used for cutting only. Sharp knives, maintain the edge after each use with eight to 10 passes. Oh, this is for the sharpener. Okay, so there you are, GoPro. Those are the instructions. So as always with these things, we've been sent them to review and give our honest opinion on them, but we're not being paid to do this. And if we think it's crap, then we'll just send it back to the manufacturer and say, well, we think this is crap and this video will never see the light of day. But if we do like it, then we'll tell you why we like it. And as you can see, I haven't got a deer carcass waiting in the wings here, so I can only show you so much of how this performs now. I'm going to have to go and murder something, no, go and harvest something to actually do something with this and give it a real field test. But I'll do what I can on top of the table. So this is what you have. You've got three knives in there like that and a sharpener and some gloves. So 
Wild cape. Oh, it says on the knives what the force. This is the caping knife. So that's a decent size. I've got massive hands and that's a reasonable size. And there's a nice little cut out there so you can get right into it and work very finely with it. Yeah, that's nice. That feels well balanced enough. Where's the balance point? There, somewhere, so it's not terrible. Oh, that's the elk horn texture. There's actually like an embossed elk horn outline. And it's got a slightly textured grip there. And it's definitely blaze orange. I'm not gonna lose that in the woods. So looks okay, stainless steel. There's a bit of flex to that knife, but it's, that's okay, okay. That pops in there, it's not too stupid to bring out either. There's some friction, but you're not gonna be wailing on that and then have it suddenly release and come into your face. You can do that under control, which is nice. So this is the wild skin. You've got the skinning hook relief there, and then a reasonable profile there. So that's okay. You could work with that. Yeah, that would, that would work. I've got nothing here to skin skin Amy but I don't you know no there's laws against that and the that, reasons <laughs> the wild bone if I stab somebody could you say you've got a wild bone in your body oh, that's as demonetized um <laughs> the wild bone well, boning knife so yeah very fine filleting knife get in between things get down to your rib sections and everywhere else that's okay all these knives have the same handle profile the, they've got some flex to them I'd feel confident curving that around a bone but they don't feel too flimsy they're def they're, they're th they've got more spring to them than you'd find with a sort of razor blade type blade or something like that but they are definitely very thin but they're a straight edge as well and they yeah that's a straight profile there's no bend to that really so that's quite nice what are those little pull V-shaped sharp. I'm just gonna assume that's removable, not that I've broken it. A little V-shaped sharpener thing so you can pull. Yeah, coarse carbide and then fine ceramic and a little twisty thing so it stays level on the table or let's face it, it's more likely to be a tree stump or the top of your rucksack or a rock, isn't it? It's not gonna be a nice wooden table like this. I don't know about you, but no one I know goes hunting with a three metre long wooden table with them. And gloves. Look like vinyl gloves, the sort of thing you get free with um, some caustic chemicals or that spray foam you get for insulation, that polyurethane foam. It's that kind of glove. So they're not, looks like they're latex free, looks like they're relatively powder free. Um, shall I put them on? So I'll see if it fits my massive hands. Yeah. Because these are quite reasonable conditions. Wet, cold, wet hands, slightly grumpy. How many pairs of gloves are there? One pair, oh, one pair, two pairs, okay. They're quite tough. It's like the OJ Simpson trial. If the glove does not fit, you must acquit. Okay, that's, I'm glad I checked that because that's built for people with smaller hands than this. I did some work in Sweden once and we were talking about hand sizes and I was talking to one of the guides there and, we was, and I went like that. I said, oh, how big are your hands? He said, no, you must never do that. To compare hands is death. And I thought it was a threat at first, but it turns out I think it's just like a bit of Swedish folklore. Any Swedes watching, please get in touch and tell me if that was completely true or whether I just had a weird hunting guide I was working with. Oh, they are powdered. They've got some powder residue there. So I'd probably swap those out with some gloves that actually fit my hands, but I can't mark the set down for the, hand, for the gloves not fitting my hands because, you yeah. have shovels. I have shovels. I say this in every video, but I've got weird genetics. I have completely saturated those instructions now as well. So I'm glad we did this on the video because we can't do a photo of those now. 
These are stainless, aren't they? So I can put that back in the set. Yeah. Probably shouldn't though. There's enough water in there already. Right. So it goes back in. That's not too heavy. I'll, I'll weigh this when I get home and I'll put the weights there. So that's how much the wild light set weighs. But that feels solid enough and that's silent. So it's not going to make a noise in your rucksack or it's not going to be a big plastic box of rattly things that's going to, going to annoy you whilst you're walking. So that's nice. And that would sit down the side of your rucksack or at the bottom or with your pack. It's not going to make too much of itself, but it's a nice set that you know, yeah, if you've packed that and you've checked that, then everything's there, ready to go for when you need to do your processing. Okay, slide that to the end of the table. Well, not my coffee off the edge. Can I have my coffee, please? Because I'm developing mild hypothermia. Thank you. Will you share your coffee? No, my coffee. That doesn't work on this table. Right, next box, please. Because I know there were two things. I like that, but I can't do much with it here because I'm in a damp forest, unarmed with the only other mammal I can, well, the dog is in the car, but I'm quite attached to the dog. And there's a squirrel over there, but I haven't quite got my throwing skills down yet so I can nail a squirrel with a throwing knife from here. And I wouldn't do that anyway. So what's this? This is dusty. It's the Outdoor Edge Outfitter. Complete hunting set in a roll pack organizer. Wow. It's nice artwork on these boxes. That would look good on a shelf. If you're a retailer in the UK and you're looking to stock these, that's not a bad point of sale thing. That's quite a nice, colorful bit of artwork. This product is, contains chemicals including chromium, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. That's a game you can play. Anything that's sold in America, just look around the box and it will say something on there saying, California says this will cause cancer. Presumably everyone's dead in California now. So what's in here? An axe, a two-stage sharpener, six-inch wood slash bone saw, okay? Two and a half inch caper, 3.9 inch gut hook skinner, five inch boning fillet, and a rib cage spreader. So it looks like a beefed up version of what was what we just looked at. What was the other one? Wild light? Wild light. So that's the wild light, and this is the out this is the outfitter set. So yeah. very nice display. I have no idea how much these are, do you know? No. Okay. Uh, how much the prices will appear here. Because I can do that in the edit. So, the Outdoor Edge Outfitter. It's in a nylon case. It doesn't look... It looks like it's built to a price. It doesn't look like the sort of thing I'd, I could leave rolling around in the bed of a pickup truck for three months and expect it to be pristine. It looks... looks okay, but in a rucksack or something it'd be fine. I don't know if I'd trust those straps to attach it to a rucksack or a side of a canoe or, you know, in the thwart of a canoe or something to uh, keep it steady and keep it attached. There we go. Is that showing up on the GoPro? Yes, it is. There are some things. So, let's open up everything in one go. Let's see. You it, rebel. I know. It, it has been noted in the office when I'm a opening boxes it is like watching a bear tear apart a camp um what how what oh i see so they're like in a pouch that goes in a pouch so you can take the two knives out like that or you can take them individually okay so well i'll leave that in there so wild cape that looks very much like the one I, that was in the wild light it probably is i'm <sighs> I've got nothing here to test sharpness on, other than the thing you, you're not meant to do and just test it on the back of your arm. Which I'm probably going to do. Okay. I'd say they're shaving sharp, but only just. It's more like exfoliating sharp. 
I mean, I can definitely feel my fingerprints as I run my thumb that way. Never run your thumb that way, but you can run it very, very gently that way. I was at a trade show once and I saw a quite well-known outdoorsman, UK outdoor writer type person who's well-known for reviews of knives go on to a well-known Swedish importer's knife stand, look at a knife and go like that and cut his thumb open. I think that blood stain is still in the carpet square somewhere for that stand. Um, but I won't say who that was. That looks okay. That looks like the other one. As I say, I'm not going to be able to do much with these until we get something to work on, a carcass to work on. And we're, it's January and we're in lockdown, so that might end up being a rabbit. But that'll be a future video. This is the wild skin, looks very much like the one from the wild light set. Looks okay. They've got the same embossed handle elk horn thing and the Outdoor Edge logo on there. That looks fine. I am doing this cack-handed because I'm doing it the other way around. And for Americans, cack-handed means doing it the wrong way around or if you're right-handed, doing it with your left hand. It doesn't mean you've got poo on your hands. Wood devil. Wood devil. <laughs> How many bits of Velcro are on this? Okay, so that's just a plate steel axe that's been laser cut or machined out. Yeah, machined out and painted up. So I wouldn't, you're not gonna fell a tree with that, but it would work for just processing through some of the tougher joints and things like that. Okay, that looks okay. It's sharp enough. It, yeah. All of these things, I'm fairly sure I could get them a little bit sharper. A lot of Velcro on this set though. That's gonna be noisy. I mean that. That's a lot of noise to, when you're trying to be quiet in the woods. Although there is a, a secret way to get Velcro, to undo Velcro in a completely, well, it's a way you will never hear the sound of the Velcro. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a technique taught to me by the special forces, but it's a way you can undo Velcro and you'll never hear the sound of the Velcro. Do you wanna, do you wanna hear? Can you, can you share the technique? I can share the technique, I'm exclusive here. Ready? Right, tell me if you hear the sound of the Velcro. One, two, three. Ah! Bet you didn't hear the Velcro. It's a good technique, that. I'm gonna have to modulate that down on the audio. <laughs> okay, so what else have we got? We've got one of those sharpener things. <clears throat> that's stiff. That's the one I, that pulled apart on the other set. Same thing, coarse carbide, fine ceramic. It's fine for field sharpening. I don't use these myself, but I can see why it would be thrown in a set like this because if you've got a sharp edge and it's a stainless steel edge and you're not worried about perfect mirror finish shaving sharp, your finest wood carving or bushcraft or whatever, show it off an Instagram knife. If it's just something to do the job and to skin and prepare a carcass and harvest the meat safely and quickly and hygienically, then something like that as a sharpener is absolutely fine. If people, people get snobby about these things and it's like, well, yes, there are better ways of doing it and there are ways you could get a better finish, but what is what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to impress people at, at camp or on the internet or are you trying to actually get the job done? And I'd rather train the people who are trying to get the job done. If you're doing things just for internet points, then you, you're probably missing the point. What is here? Oh, okay, this is... So this is a long folding, yeah, it's kind of a filleting knife type thing. That's the boner. Oh, so it's a bit longer, so it wouldn't fit in the set, but that looks, that's longer than the one from the other set. Yeah, 440A stainless. Different feel, it's not quite as rubberized as the other knives. It's got a belt clip on it there though. It's a folding, locking blade, so no good for UK EDC, but why, why would you try and want to carry that around every day in the UK? Um, we have another video here, which is all about UK knife law. 
you can go watch that and then go and read the lovely comments underneath because there are, there's no saucy comments on that video at all. Wood bone slash, oh, wood bone saw, wood or bone saw. That's what it is. So <laughs> that looks all right. That looks like a normal, normal flexible pull saw, not of the highest grade, but I think from memory, they sell replacement blades for these. And it comes in a, there's a plastic sheath thing in there. Can we get another overhead view? Just to remind people of how this is all laid out. So there, your, your caper and your skinner, that's the ax, that's the wood saw thing, that's the sharpener, that's the filleting thing. And then finally, we have the rib cage spreader. Steel stick. It's nice and shiny. Okay, that's a nice positive lock, but I'm picky about these things because if you're working, these are there to, if you're watching this video, you probably know, but these are there to hold rib cage open whilst you're working there and you're working in the carcass and it's hanging up in front of you. If you're working in an enclosed space with a long, very sharp, pointy knife, you don't want that enclosed space to suddenly become smaller as the spread rib cage suddenly snaps shut or becomes tighter. So rib cage spreaders have to be good and that has to work like that. So there's a lip here that makes it lock in place and that would go up against the ribs if my thumbs are up against the ribs there. So the pressure is on it like that and you'd have to really knock that for it to go back in, but it's still possible. So you can buy these uh, rib cage spreaders that have a lock or a pin in them so that they, once they're locked, they're locked and you have to mechanically um, do something to make them close again. Um, this doesn't have that, so worth bearing in mind. I don't think that's, there's anything wrong with that, but it, it's something to be caught, you know, to be careful of, but everything in life is a compromise. That looks okay, that looks shiny enough. You can wash that in the river or when you get back home. That is a thing with these sets that this is a nylon case. So as you're putting things away in here, you, if you're in the field, inevitably the knives, knives aren't gonna be as sharp or as clean as you'd want them to be when you put them away. So you would have to be aware of that with this and clean the whole case and being fabric, it is gonna absorb some blood and uh, other particles. So be aware of that. I mean, I think with the wild lights, that blow molded plastic case, at least you can wash it down and it should be non-absorbent. Whereas this, it's absorbent. I mean, the, the snow that's falling here is melting onto the case and it is, it's getting wet. So bear that in mind. Uh, oh yeah, there's some gloves in the end here. And there's, there's actually a bit more space in there. So you could put more things in there, more gloves or um, a small plastic sheet. Um, or you can put some of the smaller game bags or something. Well, maybe not. There's not much room there. Hunting pass and in your uh, tickets and stuff like that in there if you're in a country where that's appropriate. That's okay though. It's, you know, if, if you're going to have a compartment, may as well make it a, a compartment. You can put other things in there. So this is, what is it? The Outfitter. Outdoor Edge Outfitter. Outfitter, it says on the box. They're okay, can you pass me the wild light again for comparison? Slide it over with the wet instruction. Those are the two sets. So Outdoor Edge sent them to us for a review and to see what they're like and see whether it's something we'd recommend to our customers. As of yet, I don't know because I haven't tried it, but I'm in the lucky position where I get to try it before spending any money. If they are good, I might we might be investing in a couple of these sets for some of our upcoming courses, which were going to be 2020 courses, but then, yeah, now everything's 2021 because that's when we'll be able to do things again. Um, so we'll see. There is going to be an upcoming video where we can... I've just been told that there's three minutes left on the camera, so I better hurry up. There's going to be an upcoming video where we're going to work on an animal carcass and harvest the meat with one of these sets. Not sure which, but it looks like the key components, those knives, the caper, the gutter, and the filleting knives, they are the same in both sets, or that's a folder and that's a fixed blade. Um, 
we'll we'll see how we go. I mean, we'll see if we can get our hands on something larger. But if it's going to be a rabbit, well, we'll we'll learn something from that. I mean, you're not going to use a rib cage spreader on a rabbit carcass, but well, you can. But it'd be like two toothpicks or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to use we're going to mainly just use the blades but that'll be in an upcoming video not sure when we can film that because we are being responsible and legal with our uh, with working within the covid restrictions in our area at the moment but we will be doing that and bringing it to you as a video so thank you for watching if you liked this then please let us know in the comments underneath and like the video subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and share it with your friends all of the contact details for original outdoors are down below in the description and you will also find our social media links links to where we where you can buy the outdoor edge stuff or whoever sent it to us and uh, links on the camera gear we use because people want to know and you know, want to know what that microphone is and what this microphone is and what that light is and so on so we've got links to all of that as well again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye